really um, excited excited for our guys. Um, got off to a very slow start in the game. I think it was somewhat of a hangover from our last game. But um, I didn't scream at them in, at the first time out. Um, I thought I needed to love them up uh, because we have a team with a lot of character. And like I've been saying in my interviews, there's no surrender in our team. So I'm proud of our guys, uh, how we f finished the first half. And obviously, I'm proud of how we finished the game. We mixed up our defenses. Um, uh, punter is a terrific scorer, so we knew we had to come in and give him a lot of attention. We did that. We gave Diedrich my Mazella a lot of attention, slowed him down. Fortunately, they missed some shots. They're a well-coached team, love Coach Barnes. Uh, but I'm just really happy for our guy. Uh, it's, it's been a rough couple of days. We had a very, very hard practice on yesterday, and they it carried over into today, today's game. We were mentally and physically tough and focused uh, for a good part of the game, and the two guys that are up here, uh, Dante Hall and Rhett Nobasahan, they're two of the major factors in this game. So excited we got to win, and um, I know I'm going to get to this later, and I know I may sound like a one-out record to a lot of you guys. Thank you again to our students for showing up tonight in bad weather. The student section was packed and rocking tonight. So let me just get that out of the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go ahead. Retton, on two different occasions, appeared that the game might be on the verge of getting away from you, but y'all made two big runs. Uh, just kind of talk about what this win says about the uh, character and heart of your team. And secondly, we talked about the crowd the other day. Uh, talk about the difference the crowd made and y'all's comeback tonight. Yeah, um, uh, it's huge. You know, just having the crowd there, just like Coach said in bad weather. We appreciate it, you know, to see you know, our peers, you know, coming out to support us, you know, in our endeavors, just out here competing. Um, it's just great. You know, it's great to see them up there. It's great to see them, you know, cheering for us and you know, making, making the Coleman Coliseum one of the hardest places to play in college basketball. Um, so we truly appreciate that. And on coming back, yeah, it's just, it just speaks to the character of our team. Um, just like Coach said, uh, we don't surrender. You know, we don't give up. Uh, we just, we're going to keep believing. Uh, the game is it's not over until the clock shows zero. So that's something that we kept on preaching, kept on preaching, keep going, keep playing, you know, one, one position at a time. And, and score will take care of itself. Uh, Dante, uh, you both halves, you seem to juice the team with your energy. You had, uh, you know, three block shots, a couple of steals, and uh, six rebounds. I know you fouled out in 14 minutes, but just talk about your game on the floor. I thought you were the key, really, to get in and everybody going. Um, I, I knew that I had to be a big part of the game tonight. Um, I had to come out and do what I, I knew I could do, spark up the team, help us with our energy in the game and keep the crowd in it. As we said the um, student session was pretty nice tonight. Um, all the fans actually helped, helped with us with our win tonight. So far last minute. Yeah. Redden, let me ask you, what kind of energy did, did Dante provide for, for you guys? Oh, Dante was huge, a little spark plug over there. Um, <laughs> no, he was huge for us. You know, the energy that he brings, he brings it on a daily basis. So basically what you guys saw today was just a microcosm of what he brings every day in practice. Coach said, hey, it's been a rough couple of days. Um, you know, you had the ball in your hands at the end of Saturday's game, and you had the ball at the end of this game. You know, uh, in, in one, it didn't look like affected the other. Uh, talk about really not having a short memory, I guess. Uh, no, I give, you know, I give all credit to our coaching staff and our teammates. You know, they, you know, they get on me, you know, whenever, you know, I put my head down or, you know, I'm thinking about a bad play. They really get on me and just tell me keep playing. You know, they trust me and I trust them. And it, you know, at the end of you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're just doing this for each other. Um, I'm playing for them, and they and they play for play for me. And so it's just it's a great feeling. Let's do a couple more questions. So, Avery, the other day you talk about the free throw struggles, and in particular wanting to be better during the course of the last five minutes. Hey, how much more satisfying does that make it going 11 of 13 and making some some key free throws down the stretch? There? I'll, I'll let Dante answer that question because that's something we've been talking about even in practice not committing silly fouls, putting the other team on the line. And then when we get to the line, you know, we take them and make them and, and, and have a lot of confidence. So I'll let Dante talk about that. Go ahead, Dante. Um, starting from when we first started, 
struggling real bad in free throws. Coach Avery had us shooting a couple free throws after practice and before practice, shooting free throws, getting better, doing what we need to do. Um, throughout the uh, throughout the game, they like we was really concentrating on free free throws mm -hmm. at the line. So I knew with us going to the line, that'd be a pretty good help. Just one more for Dante. Um, you know, talk about your development and, and is your comfort level increasing, I guess, just to, as you go along? You know, how much better do you feel this time than this time last month? This time last month, I would say my confidence was pretty low, to be honest. Um, I, didn't, I didn't come looking for what I knew I could do. I came trying to do more than what I can. Like... Tonight, I, I did what I knew I had to do to get, like, to help with the team tonight. Just for both players, uh, Shannon Hill has shown in the past that he can score points like he did tonight, but what does it mean for the team just when he's able to score 20 points? And then what did y'all see from him out in the court? That just, oh, that just gives us an extra weapon. Um, Shannon, Shannon is extremely talented, and you guys know that um, with the accolades he's accumulated over his career here. So... Just for him to, to kind of get back, you know, get his swagger back, as we would say, is, is really huge for us. Um, he came out, and even regardless of just his scoring, just his rebounding and his tenacity on defense, that helped us too. Uh, so just for him, it was a huge game. He played a terrific all-around game. Yeah, Red Bot summed it up, but he was a spark for tonight, a major spark. Tell everybody where, uh, before I went to see Dejon when I got the coaching job, where was one of my first stops? First stop was Lou Vern, Alabama. All right, good. <laughs> good. All right, see you later. <laughs> see you later. I have two. First, um, you're, you're still down eight with, in the final four minutes, with four minutes to go. Um, what did you say to him? You said you didn't yell at him at the Early on, what did you say to him? Down eight, four minutes to go. What was the what was well? The, the first thing I was talking to Arthur Edwards, and I said, "Do you remember when you came here on an official trip with your parents? We brought you in because we needed some experience and we needed your shooting." He was open two times, see, so and didn't take the shot. I said, "Would you please just shoot the ball?" So fortunately, he shot the next one, big three fours. And he made it. So I was just begging him to shoot. Um, and I just think, fortunately, we were able to change our defenses. Retton made some plays, so that enabled us to get back, play some man, play some zone, trap a little bit. You know, we came in this game basically, I wouldn't say terrified, but we were very concerned about Punter and um, uh, Diedrich Mustella. Very, you know, they were major points of emphasis and uh, Coach Barnes has done a nice job with this team, and they they won a big game. You know, that was a big win for them in their last game. So they were when you win a game, you're a hot team. So um, we're fortunate to get some stops, change our defenses, and Arthur finally took and made a, a shot for us. And also, uh, in talking to Dante, Jimmy only played 11 minutes. Was that coach's decision? Coach strictly a coach's decision. Yeah, you know that that position has to give us basically what Dante gave us, block shots, rebound. We talked to our centers about being the last line of defense because, you know, we're a scrappy team, and sometimes we're going to get broken down. They have to uh, erase some of our mistakes. And, you know, if, if they can't do that, then, you know, we got to try to go up elsewhere and try to get some other guys in there. Coach, we asked the players about him. I'll ask you about Shannon Hale's uh, production tonight and, and just how, it, not just at the end of the game, but I think with about, about midway through the second half, I, I think he went on like a 10-0 run himself mm -hmm. to kind of keep you guys in it. And, and it was just him putting the ball on the floor and making plays. And, you know, he, we know he can make his free throws. So he got to the line tonight, made his free throws, um, and we definitely need it, needed every bit of his, you know, 10 attempts and nine makes. But also, I just thought he did a nice job of rebounding, especially out of our zone, because we've been talking to our guys about rebounding outside of your area. We, we're, we do a decent job of rebounding in our area, but guys, 
we talked to him about thinking about that they're the only guy that can get a rebound. Uh, and there's, you know, we don't have four of the guys on the court. So he did a nice job of rebounding outside of his area. Coach, the uh, season started off with you winning some games like this. Then the conference began, and you started losing some games like this. Tonight, did you, did you get a sense, at least there at the end, that your young team is beginning to grow up a little bit? I did, and I was really encouraged. Um, and as I shared with the team before the game, uh, I wanted their energy and their enthusiasm and their effort at 40,000 feet, all right? Because we were at 38,000 feet in our last game, and that's not good enough. So fortunately, they turned it on in the second half. We made some plays. And these SEC games are tough. And, you know, it's a play here, a play there. You know, in our last game against LSU, they did just what we wanted them to do on defense, trapped the ball, and we had two people open and we didn't make the correct pass. But again, that's my job as a coach to review the video with the guys and try to continue to coach them up and build their confidence and encourage them to, and show them how to make the right play. So fortunately tonight, we got a good on time on target pass to Arthur. He made a shot, Rhett made some plays at the basket and we were fortunate to win. But you know, this is, this is a microcosm of our season. You, you're watching a team that I told our guys are an inspiration to a lot of people all across this state. Uh, Coach, I, I know you've called him the ultimate lunch pail guy, but I, he didn't. He struggled shooting tonight, but I thought Riley Norris, huge on the glass, 13 rebounds, and I thought he really did a good job of getting his hands on a lot of basketballs and defending without fouling, only committing two fouls. Just talk about his performance for you. See, a lot of times, Drew, the sexy stats are – if a guy go three for three from the three-point line, all right, that's the sexy, that's the style part. I'm looking at substance. Riley rebounded the basketball. He did a great job what, you know, in his individual matchups with some of their hot players. He got three steals. He's got great positive energy in the huddle. I'm about substance, and Riley is a young man that's got a lot of substance to him, and that's why I'm glad – that uh, he's he's a part of our team, a major part, and uh, he's been contributing since we inserted him into the starting lineup. And then the second question, when, of course, when the game got tight, there was 55-49. Did you tell, was your message in the huddle to Redden to get to the basket? Get to the basket. We were trying to get to the basket all night. You know, we started settling for some jump shots there. Uh, we thought we had a little bit of a size advantage but we weren't utilizing it. So fortunately, he started getting to the basket when we needed him to at some crucial points in the game. Just two more questions. Go ahead, Coach. Coach, it's still fairly early in your process, but uh, when you look back on a game like this, do you think that this will be one of the key building blocks, you think, down the road? Uh... Absolutely. You know, look at our season. You know, we opened up a building at Ole Miss, right? And we're right there. I mean, we're right there. We come back 36 hours later and don't have a great, probably one of our not so good games. But the rest of our games, on whether at home or on the road that we've dropped, you know, we, we get an off over the loop back foul, you know, at Auburn. And, you know, we don't make a play at the end of the LSU game. And this is a team that everybody picked to come in 13th in the SEC, right? But every day, every day we, we, we're there. And every game, if we can continue to learn some valuable lessons and have good execution, it could be anybody's ball game in the last two or three minutes. We just have to be in play. Um, and for the most part in SEC play, in the last three to five minutes, we've been within striking distance. Last question, all the way back to Coach. Coach, your team finished the game, 16-2 run. Five of those last six field goals were by Retno Basahan. You kind of touched on it already, but where would this team be leadership-wise, both on the floor and off it, without Retno Basahan? No, I don't know where we'd be. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where we'd be. Um, I went and visited Retno's church on uh, on on Sunday, and um, you know, people were just coming up to me doing, after the service, just telling me that he really is a great example of leadership. And he is. Uh, every day in practice, 
He works hard on his game before and after practice. Uh, he's a model citizen, uh, great community guy, smart, articulate. Um, so I don't know where we'd be. I'm glad, you know, when I got the job, he could have gone a lot of places, right? Fifth-year guys are a hot, I don't want to say a hot commodity. That's probably not a good word, but they're valuable, okay? So I'm glad he decided to come back, especially with Dejon's injury now. Now we've had to put him back at point guard, so he's a great example of uh, leadership, and I'm really proud of his maturation and development in that area. Thanks. All right, thanks. Good to see you, CM.